Now the cutoff and DEFCO, this is gonna be where we have our D-cell fuel cut and we have our RPM limiters. So we're gonna rev this a little bit higher than uh, stock. So we're gonna go here, it's a built motor. We'll go to 6600 and then we'll also change this to 6600. We'll go into in gear. I'm gonna move this up to 6600. And then I'll move my resume and I'll go here to uh, 6599, click equals. Um, we're gonna move this up to also 66 and the resume here will do 65.99. And then we find our ETC, this is our throttle based control we can find here based on gear, we can shut our throttle down as a means of not hitting the rev limiter here. If you wanna use that, you have to go to easy to control method here from disable, turn that on. It'll shut your throttle before you actually hit a fuel cut, um, which is gonna be what these are based on. I'm gonna be not using that in this vehicle, but it is an option, so you find that here. I'm not going to touch D-cell cut, I'm going to leave it on. I don't really find a need to disable it, so I'm going to keep things simple and keep moving here. So the lean fuel saving, we don't need. Moving on here to the transient, we shouldn't have to touch anything in here. Now, um, if you have a different intake manifold, if you have a sheet metal intake manifold or um, things are drastically changed on the intake side of things, a um, huge throttle body, you may need to visit this table and alter some of the values in here. We shouldn't have to on this, it should drive perfectly fine without. This has a stock throttle body and a stock intake manifold, so we don't, don't need to worry about it. We shouldn't have to worry about it. Now let's jump under spark here. Um, we're gonna move into taking a look at our high and low octane. All the other values here from general and base, we'll leave them alone. On the high octane table, we don't know what our cylinder air mass is gonna be going to on this. We know that the top of the scale here is 1.2. We're definitely gonna reach that because we're boosted. So we're gonna be assuming, um, or I'm gonna be assuming, that something like 0.88 and higher here is gonna be boost section of the table. We'll know more when we start to do some pulls, but we have to make an assumption to start putting some values in here. I'm gonna lower the spark timing way, way down here. So from 0.88 and below, I'm gonna be setting all the values in here to 12 degrees. And then I'm just gonna do an interpolation here and go upwards and do a vertical interpolation and just pull some spark timing out. So I'm getting the tables ready for boost. I don't know exactly, again, where my, what my cylinder air mass is gonna go and, and reach, but I'm assuming it's gonna be going to 1.2, which is the highest we're gonna to go to here in the table, and we cannot rescale this, unfortunately, in this Gen 3 ECU. I am gonna be taking my table here, I'm gonna be copying it, jumping into my low octane table here, and then I'm gonna be pasting it. In speed density mode, we lose the low high, high octane uh, table uh, uh, weighting factor, so we simply have to make them the same and just tune conservative and watch what our knock retard's doing. So we'll go here and we'll close that. Now under fuel, under base, we can see we have our EQ ratio up on top here. So if we're commanding a richer air fuel, that's gonna be adding spark timing based on engine RPM. And we don't want that. We want it to run right on the amount that we're coming from our table here for our spark timing. So let's go here and zero out this entire table because we are gonna be commanding a richer air fuel, richer than 1.0 Lambda, or 1.0 EQ, I should say, which is 14.7. So let's go in, let's set this at zero and click equals and zero it out. Now our IET base, we'll find here that we're probably gonna be getting up 